bonjour. Uh, I am Gabriela Ciovac and today I want to present uh, um, my, uh, pr uh, my research, uh, Sharp, Bernstein and Hebding Type Inequalities for Regenerative uh, Markov Chains. And this is a joint work with my advisor Patrice Bertay. So the outline of my speech is as follows. Firstly, I will introduce and recall some uh, basic uh, definitions and properties uh, about atomic Markov chains and Harris recurrent Markov chains. And then I will briefly describe the Namelin splitting technique that allows us to use regenerative uh, properties in a more general Harris recurrent case. And then I will present my result concerning uh, maximal inequalities under uniform entropy. And I present uh, Bernstein type maximal inequality for regenerative Markov chains and then the bounded case. And in this case, I will, I will uh, present Hefding type maximal inequality. And after all, I will sh um, show that it's uh, easy to generalize those results into Harris recurrent case. And I will just briefly show a Bernstein type uh, maximal inequality in a case when Markov chains are Harris recurrent. So having said that though, let's, let's get started. So firstly, I assume that X is a homogeneous Markov chain with a transition probability pi and initial probability V. And I also assume that X is uh, phi irreducible and aperiodic. And we are interested in uh, this framework in atomic structure of the chain. And we say that the chain X is regenerative or atomic when there exists a measurable set A such that all the transition probabilities from such sets are the same. So whenever the chain hits this regeneration set, it forgets its past, so regenerates itself. So when we are unsure that our chain possesses atomic structure, we can right now define the sequence of regeneration times tau aj. And by tau a, I denote the first time when the uh, chain uh, visits atomic set A. And by tau, a, uh, tau aj, I denote all uh, jth uh, consecutive visits of the chain into atomic set A. And when we have the regeneration uh, times uh, sequence, we can now cut our data into, uh, seg into uh, segments uh, which are just the blocks uh, corresponding to the consecutive visits of the chain uh, to regeneration set A. And by the strong Markov property, we know that such blocks are independent and identically distributed. So this regenerative uh, structure of the chain allows us to, in a natural way, to generalize the theory from IID setting into Markovian one, because instead of considering IID observations, we are just working with IID blocks. In this framework, we are also interested in a more general class of Markov chains, uh, Harris recurrent uh, Markov chains. And Harris recurrence is a communication property of Markov chains. And when X is phi irreducible Markov chain, we know that the chain is visiting uh, infi infinite number of uh, times any set of positive measure phi with probability one. So we know that. Uh, so this is a communication property of, uh, of our chain. However, we don't know if there exists some set uh, from which all the transition probabilities are the same. So this property does not ensure that our chain is atomic. And uh, as, you suppo as you can suspect, uh, we also would like to uh, use regeneration techniques also in the general case, uh, Harris recurrent one. So, uh, we don't know if uh, there is uh, atomic structure in this chain. And actually, in order to retrieve those properties, we need to extend the probabilistic structure of the chain uh, via the Namelin splitting technique in order to construct artifi an artificial atom. And then, uh, via this technique, we can actually retrieve regeneration properties in a, a Harris recurrent case. So before I will formulate the Namelin splitting technique, I will just uh, introduce a notion of small set, since the Namelin splitting technique relies heavily uh, on, uh, on this uh, entity. So we say that S is a small set if it uh, satisfies this minorization condition, which is just the uniform bound from below on the transition probabilities. So having in mind the definition of small set, we can right now switch to the mm, description of Namelin splitting technique. So uh, by uh, Yn, I denote a sequence of independent random variables with parameter delta. And we want to construct the bivariate chain Xm. 
and uh, the Nanolin splitting technique relies on the randomization of the transition probability pi each time uh, that uh, the, the chain visits um, uh, the small set S and the definition I just provided a few, few uh, moments ago. So if xn is in S and yn is equal to 1 and that happens with probability delta, then xn plus 1 is distributed according to the probability measure phi. And if xn is in S and yn is equal to 0 and that happens with probability 1 minus delta, then xn plus 1 is distributed according to the following probability measure. So if we look uh, if we take a closer look at the transition probabilities of our bivariate chain xm, we see that whenever xn is in S and yn is equal to 1, then all the transition probabilities are the same, because xn plus 1 is distributed according to the probability measure phi. So we see that uh, if mm, the, all the transition probabilities from such set are the same, that meets our definition of Aton <coughs> I introduced, so that's why by S hat, I denote the uh, atomic uh, set for the bivariate chain Xn. So right now we are working instead of uh, with the chain X, with the bivariate chain Xn. And what is important in this case, uh, it is shown for instance in a book of Main and Weddy and very well explained, that the bivariate chain Xm inherits all the um, properties, communication properties of the chain uh, X. So we have phi irreducibility, aperiodicity, and so on. So whatever we establish for the bivariate chain Xm uh, holds also for Harris recurrent uh, chain X. So nonlinear splitting technique is a quite uh, theoretical construction, so maybe it's better to uh, take a look at the illustration. So here we observe the trajectory of the autoregressive uh, model of order 1. And we see that whenever we are in this gray area is just the small set we've, we've chosen. So whenever we are outside small sets, uh, we see that no regeneration happens. And whenever x, y is in S and y, i is equal to 0, that happens with probability 1 minus delta, uh, we also observe no, no regeneration. And whenever we have the realization that uh, x is in a small set S and y, k is equal to 1, we, have the, uh, we cut our data and we create a new block. So here you have the block decomposition of the autoregressive uh, process of order 1, which is a Harris recurrent Markov chain. So this is a short introduction into processes I consider, and right now um, I want to uh, switch to presenting of my results, but before I will do it, I will just introduce a little bit uh, more notation. So firstly by FBI, oops, um, I denote uh, just the sum of observations fxi between two consecutive uh, visits of the chain to atomic set A. And I assume that the mean interrenual time alpha is finite, and by ln I denote the total number of consecutive visits of the chain to the atomic uh, set A. And uh, I decompose this, the sum of observations fxi into two components. So firstly I sum block up to some deterministic number n over alpha, plus the reminder term delta n, and the first uh, counterpart of delta n is just the first non-regenerative block. Here is the reminder term between n alpha and ln, the random number of blocks, and this is the last non-regenerative uh, block. And uh, by sigma square f, I denote the asymptotic variance. So in this framework, I consider maximal inequalities for uh, Markov chains. That's why uh, I need to control the size of the class of functions uh, f I consider. And in this case, I am using uh, uniform uh, entropy <coughs> number and covering number. So the covering number is just the minimal number of balls of radius epsilon needed to cover the set f and the uniform entropy number, so we just take the supremum uh, over all the discrete probability measures, uh, q. So here are the assumptions under which I derived uh, my maximal inequality. So firstly, I uh, impose the Bernstein uh, block moment condition uh, on, the, uh, on f, and, uh, oops, and the second assumption is just the assumption on the moments of returns to the uh, Markov chain to atomic set A. The next assumption is just exponential uh, moment condition on the, on the first non-regenerative block. Uh, the A4 assumption is just assumption on the last uh, 
uh, non-regenerative block. And uh, finally, I just require that the uniform entropy number is finite. So here is the result. So we assu assume that X is a regenerative positive recurrent Markov chain. And then under the mention assumptions uh, for epsilon less than X, we have uh, for n large enough the bound on the tail probability of the scaled uh, and centered process. So here we have few counterparts. Uh, here we have few counterparts uh, in the bound. So the first exponential uh, term is related to the uh, bound uh, for the sum from i equal to one to n over alpha for the blocks. The second um, exponential. This is the bound related uh, for the first non-regenerative block. This bound uh, comes from the bound for the um, last non-regenerative block and this, those bounds are just the bounds obtained for the sum from n over alpha up to ln. And what is important in this framework that all the constants in the bound can be co uh, explicitly computed and the form of them is given in the paper uh, which we submitted and is available online. I will tell you about uh, this paper when I will speak about references. So the remark, uh, short remark, so as you saw, uh, the bound uh, works for a um, sufficiently large n and it's actually the kind of a drawback uh, since the inequality is deviation inequality and we would like to have a concentration inequality for our applications. However, if f belongs to a a ball of a holder space CP and uh, we have an Euclidean space endowed with the norm of uh, that type, then the inequality actually is concentration one. So sketch of the proof. So we are considering a centered version of the Fx and uh, we notice that as n is going to infinity, that ln, the number of, uh, t the total number of uh, blocks is behaving like n over alpha and we consider the sum of blocks uh, summed up to deterministic equivalent n over alpha and we consider the uh, sum consisting from this uh, from that uh, so we decompose um, the the sum uh, of the fxi minus uh, minus min up to z uh, to zn alpha and delta nf and we note that since uh, uh, the process uh, which is the sum of the blocks up to n over alpha is just independent. Those uh, FBI's uh, bar are just independent and identically distributed sub-exponential random variables. So we can directly apply uh, the Bernstein, uh, Bernstein inequality on that, ta on that part. And for the delta n, uh, the analysis is more complicated. So we decompose the state probability into three counterparts and we want to, sepa and to, and we want to uh, control all those three counterparts separately. So uh, the first and the last terms associated with the control of the first and last uh, blocks, which are non-regenerative, can be easily controlled by the Markov inequality. And for the mm, reminder term, uh, when we consider a sum from ln up to n over alpha, this is more complicated. So uh, actually, uh, the proof is quite technical, but the control of this term actually comes down to the control of the moment generating functions of the process and it's quite technical since we in this case we need to consider all the regeneration scenarios uh, of uh, the Markov chain X and that is quite technical and you can find all the details uh, in the paper uh, which treats uh, this kind of results uh, which I wrote with uh, Patrice Bertay. And uh, in order to switch to the maximal uh, inequality, we just uh, uh, control, uh, we just apply uh, some arguments uh, similar to arguments uh, in Pollard and Kosarok and combining that, we can actually switch uh, uh, to uh, the result for the supremum. So, um, and in this part, uh, actually, uh, it is crucial if we have deviation inequality or concentration inequality, since in order to have the bound, which is a function of the uniform entropy number, in case we are not, uh, it depends on what kind of, uh, in which space is our f, in order to uh, obtain uh, either concentration or the either deviation inequality. So, in this part, we must be more careful. So we can obtain naturally even a sharper band when uh, class F is a uh, uniformly bounded. Uh, so uh, in that case, we are able to obtain Hefting type inequality 
and actually uh, we can have a sharper control of the uh, moment generating uh, functions. So under the assumption that uh, f is uniformly bounded, we can actually obtain the heading type maximal inequality for regenerative Markov chains. So uh, here you, we see that uh, for the sub-exponential IID random variables, we are able to retrieve the bound, which is a heading type bound. And actually uh, L and uh, R uh, can be, uh, are just uh, um, of the different form because we have bounded case and we have a better control of the, on the bound on the moment generating functions. So actually the bound C1, C2, L and R actually uh, are uh, enabling us in this case to for a sharper control over the tail probability. So it is noteworthy that uh, this kind of uh, results can be easily um, uh, generalized into a Harris case via the Namely splitting technique. So as I mentioned, this technique allows us to extend the probabilistic structure of the chain in order to construct an artificial atom and uh, use all the regenerative properties also in the Harris case. So uh, the generalization works under slightly different assumptions uh, we need to put on the chain. So as you see, we just uh, have this, the same kind of conditions like Bernstein block moment condition, block, block length moment assumption, and the assumptions on the last and the first uh, non-regenerative blocks. However, in this case, we just need to take a supremum over all y in a small set, and we consider just the conditional on y uh, moments, and we just uh, do the same kind of um, uh, change uh, for all the next assumptions. And under those modifications, we obtain a Bernstein type inequality for Harris recurrent Markov chains. So here is just the bound, and uh, you see that it's a similar uh, form as before. Instead of we just consider the a bivariate chain and we consider just um, alpha m uh, and uh, which is uh, mean interrenewal time for the bivariate chain xm but uh, the rest uh, and c1, c2, uh, l and r are of a slightly different form but the bound is uh, quite similar as in a regenerative case. So uh, here are just small, uh, small part of references. So firstly this is a paper which I wrote with my advisor Patrice Bertay. And here you can find all the details be behind the proofs and more explanation about regenerative uh, uh, Markov chains and Harris recurrent framework. This is the paper uh, my both advisors wrote and actually what we've done, we slightly improved the results since uh, the inequalities we obtained here are a special case of the fact nagayev inequality obtained by Patrice and Stefan in their paper. Kosarog and Pollard are just uh, the references when I was mentioning how to switch from the uh, just uh, Bernstein type inequality into maximal type of it. And here is the paper of Namelin that explains uh, how to split and how to create a bivariate chain XM with artificial atom AM that allows us to employ all the regenerative techniques also in the Namelin, in the Harris recurrent case. So uh, this is all what I wanted to present for you. I encourage you to look uh, for the details of the proofs just to the paper uh, which I wrote with Patrice. So thank you for your attention, and if you have some questions, I'm happy to answer. Okay, we, we need to hurry up a little bit, but maybe one quick question. So, so just uh, so before your yes. work, there were only works in special cases. And before oh. we worked, there was no uh, result for uh, Harris case. So this is. Uh, so this is uh, actually um, uh, the, the novelty and also there was no results for regenerative Markov chains. It was only results for Markov chains under mixing conditions which are difficult to verify and in this case all the conditions are very easy to check and you can apply uh, the inequalities directly and also there was like um, many results with very difficult constants to compute and here we have the explicit form and actually the rates which, which, which we obtained are enabling us to um, retrieve fast rates in statistical learning algorithms because we want to apply this kind of results to um, showing some consistency uh, for the statistical learning algorithms and the rates we obtained here are satisfying us because they are allowing us to obtain uh, fast rates when uh, learning the statistical learning algorithms. So this is the motivation behind. Thank you. Okay, so let's thank... Uh Gabriela again, and uh, <coughs> donc on, 
on change de sujet.